Rick Hemmett from AFN Berlin was at the super concert held in that city during the past month. Rick has some heavy observations of one of the last three public performances done by Hendrix. I think that if we were to pick one word to describe his music, we'd probably have to resort to that rather misused term, heavy. But when applied to this cap, it's the real thing. I'm just going to... At that time, that Jimi Hendrix was a man who had a lot of things to give to the world. And rather than eulogize him, I'm just going to let you listen to the interview that was done the night of September 4th here in Berlin. It was conducted backstage at a place called the Deutschlandhalle. The acoustics aren't very good, so you might want to turn up your radios and listen to this just a little bit louder. Hendrix, I don't know, personal impressions are something that uh, should be put in here, perhaps. I've interviewed a lot of people, especially a lot of rock groups, and Jimi Hendrix uh, was a hard man to speak. He was a hard man to draw out into the open. <laughs> to do this interview it was also being filmed by the american forces television station here in berlin and it was a very small dressing room perhaps old 10 feet square or something like that there was a huge film camera there about 20 people crowded in the room myself and a reporter from british forces broadcasting up here named chris romberg were doing the interview with hendrix where we begin right here is where the man behind the television camera asked us for an introduction. Yeah, introduction. Introduction? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the right kind of introduction. We have to be serious. We're backstage at the Deutschland Hall speaking with guitarist Jimi Hendrix. And Jimmy, I'd like to know, first of all, what you thought uh, about your appearance in the film Woodstock, especially the, the scene at the end with the national anthem. I guess they could have showed uh, some of the songs, probably, you know. And, like, they, they like came in on the show at the end of it, and I wish they could have cut more of the musical side of it, really, you know. Do you think they tried to make a political issue out of it? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Not really. I don't think so. <laughs> this is the way it is, yeah. yeah. What about festivals like Woodstock? Do you think there'll ever be another gathering of people that large that'll have the same kind of vibes? Well, no, because, like, uh, it's pretty hard for the sound to get to all those people, you know, it's such a big crowd. Like, if they had the smaller, smaller crowds, you know, you wouldn't get next to them more, you know. But it's just too big, you know. How do you feel about playing before, say, 400,000 people? Well, that's what I mean. It's just too big, you know. You, just, you know you're not getting through to, you know, all of them. And uh, the idea to play to them is to try to, you know, turn them on or something. Do you think that uh, large music festivals are actually just an extension of the commercialism angle? Is it too is it too commercial? Well, I don't know. I really, you know, it's, I don't think that I will really pay too many more of those, you know, anyway. So it's, it's really not too much to talk about, really. It's just too much. It's just too many things going on. And not enough, you know, love or concentration on one certain thing. Prophetic words, perhaps because the last gig that Jimi Hendrix played was the night after he did this concert in Berlin on the Isle of Fermont. It was another one of the large festival gatherings. It would be very hard to characterize Jimi Hendrix in words. You had to meet him, you had to talk to him, you just had to watch him. The night that he played the concert here in Berlin, he seemed very tired. I wouldn't say that he was strung out, but he just seemed tired and sort of uninterested. Let's go on with the interview. This is Chris Romberg of BFBS. And Jimmy, you just come from the Isle of Wight, which is another of these last large festivals. Did you enjoy that? Well, you know, I enjoyed playing anywhere. But like it was dark, you know, I was playing at nighttime, I couldn't see everybody. You know, if I could see the people instead of just lines of bonfires up there, you know. I said, well, I could tell there was a hill back up there. <laughs> Well, like, uh, oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Do you prefer playing at a concert like this one where uh, the accent is more coming to listening to music than gathering in a folk festival? Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. You think uh, you're more appreciated here? Oh, no. It's pretty hard to say. Sometimes it's easier playing at different places, you know, at different times. You know, but Germany in the summertime is, is beautiful. Do yeah. you enjoy playing in Germany? Yeah. 
Do you think German audiences differ from English audiences? I don't know, it's pretty hard to say. We haven't played in England in a long time, you know. We have to go out there and play again, it's the... But it's, you know, it's, it's pretty hard to say. Is there really uh, anyone in, in pop music or, say, rock music that when you hear their stuff, you go, you know, wow, they really knocked me out? Yeah. Sly. <laughs> Sly Stone? Yeah, because I like his beat, you know, I like his pulse. Music lover and dance to the music, all those type of things, you know. And Richie Haven, which is out of sight. And remembering past performances I've seen by Jimi Hendrix, I had seen him in concert three times. This time was the first in about a year and a half, and he had changed his style quite a bit. I think it probably had something to do with the Band of Gypsies album earlier this year, but he was he was much more melodic than he was in the past. In the past, he was fire and brimstone and that type of thing. And now his style had changed slightly. He had become more tuneful, more into being a creative guitarist. In other words, he was creative before, but now he was becoming creative in a different vein. Later on in this interview, you'll hear a question about the Monterey Pop Festival. That was the first time that I had been exposed to Jimi Hendrix, and that was probably his big national breakout, both in the States and around the world. At that time, his act consisted of uh, wild, just, you know, dancing around the stage, playing his guitar behind his neck, and all the things that you've heard about Jimi Hendrix in his early days. At the end of the performance, he set his axe on fire, and then he set his hair on fire, and it was really something that people were just really into Jimi Hendrix. The night at the Deutschland Halle, he was much more subdued, much quieter, and as we said, much more into the melody. His drummer, Mitch Mitchell, had slowed down quite a bit, too, but Bill Cox provided a much funkier bass line than Noel Redding was ever capable of. As Jimmy says later on in the interview, Noel was more into playing melodies than he was into being a funky bass player. So let's go on with this unedited interview, again conducted the night of September 4th at the Super Concert in Berlin. And I was wondering about... Uh the experience that's appearing here in Berlin tonight. This is really, there's only one man difference from the original Jimi Hendrix experience, mm -hmm. and that being your new bass player, Bill Cox. Mm -hmm. I was wondering how... Uh, we have all, a new road manager, too, the old Gene McFadden, <laughs> <laughs> besides Jerry Stickles and Eric Barrett. Well, we can't forget the plug. Well, you can't forget <laughs> because like, those are the ones that keep it together. Yeah. Right? Everybody forgets about that side of it, really. That's true. That's something I'd like to find out. Um, behind the scenes people normally do a lot more than you it's or like or a beautiful or. airplane and everybody almost forgets about the pilot sometimes you know mm -hmm. and you know whatever kind of way you want to look at it i was wondering about uh, the group itself however mm -hmm. and uh the reason that the original experience broke up with no running and mitch mitchell and, and now that you're back together with your old drummer mitch how bill cox came to you yeah, well, uh, you know, him and I, we used to play together before. And, uh, like, we're doing a lot of bass unison, bass and guitar unison things, you know, which makes, the, it's nothing but, like, a lot of rhythms, or what do you call it? It's like patterns, like, you know. And, like, um, I don't know. See, no, he, he has his own thing, you know. He's, he gets his own, you know, group. He has his own group, and he's into his own thing, you know, he's more of an individual himself, I guess, more like that. And like, I wanted the, the bottom to be this, a little solid, you know, more, Noel's more of a melodic player, you know, and Billy plays more of a solid space. You know? Do you think that the Monterey Festival back in 67 was uh, the original starting point for what we could say is you now the fame of Jimi Hendrix? Oh, for a group, yeah. Yeah, right. And as far as that Monterey Festival goes, I was there, and I thought there were a lot of fantastic performances there. Will there ever be anything in pop music like, like Monterey again? Oh, I'm not sure. I really don't know about pop music, you know. No telling, you know. It'd be nice if it was. That's the next wave around, or, you know, yeah. next time around. This is the... Oh, well, that's too much. <laughs> How do you feel when you're on tour? How do you feel at the moment? Right. Yeah. I'm just worried a little bit now because, like, I saw him a tiny bit like a frog. 
<laughs> you know, because the last night we was playing so loud, and I was just shouting on my tiptoes, and I felt like my kneecaps were up in my chest. Yeah, please. <laughs> And uh, right now I still kind of nervous, but I think it'll be all right. Because now we're going to go on and do our little gig, like Mitch will be playing drums and Bill playing bass, and I'll be playing guitar, <laughs> you know, instead of up there screaming. You know. Do you get very worn out? Yeah, but certain things will charge me in an instant. I might get worn out in an instant, too. All that things. Like interviews, maybe? Well, sometimes they're fun, you know. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes you're funny doing too. <laughs> yeah, I wish you would have caught that, you know, at a more unnervous time because, like, yeah. right now we have to go on. So, like, really, uh, uh, we understand. At this point, uh, I think some personal business should come up, perhaps, in this interview. Um, I've never been on film and I've never been on television before. I've done strictly radio and had a very short career at that. And as we said before, this interview was being filmed. Hendrix was nervous about being on film i was rather nervous in fact everybody that was in front of the camera was and after we had wrapped up uh, what we thought was the end of the interview there were some rather nervous good nights exchanged good night. thank you very much good, thank you. now at this point we thought that the interview was concluded and the film crew started to shut down their camera but just at that point the man from american forces television here in berlin sergeant keith robin decided he was going to ask uh, Hendrix what he thought about Mongo Jerry and their interview in the summertime. I already had my tape machine shut off, but I turned it on in time to catch the rest of these comments and this reaction from Hendrix and the crew that was in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Why does that name always spark laughter whenever everybody has Mongo Jerry? You have a bust okay. up laugh? I think that's a happy song. It, it is. It's a great song. It's like this, but I think it's so yeah. good. I would like to know what. He said, You're that woman, you're that woman, are you mine? Your opinion of the song and the, the group of what you know of them? Well, I think it's a beautiful summertime type of song. And, you know. You think there's any future in that group? What's that group? Well, I don't know about the group, but the, but the, I don't know about the group, but the, uh, you know, the song is cute, you know, it's nice and happy and it's nice and light, and, uh, you know, it gets laid it down. I didn't know it was a group, I thought they just got together to make that one record. But, you know, best of luck to anybody who, you know, wants to get together. Mongo <laughs> Jerry. It was the night of September 4th, going on at the Super Concert here in Berlin.